my god, that fat ass now. <laughs> Woo! Sexy man. <laughs> Alright, people. So as you can tell by the title, we got a deck profile of a Zephyr deck, people. Yes, a Zephyr deck. I totally underestimate this deck. This guy whooped my ass. He did. He really whooped my ass. I uh, had to work hella hard for it, man. <laughs> I did terrible in this tournament. Anyway, he's like, oh, let me get that deck profile. So we're gonna get that deck profile. So uh, go ahead and do it and explain all the cards. Alright. I run two Denebs mm -hmm. because, you know, when there's someone they can search out any Teller Knight. Yep. Which you run the three uh, Satellar Zephyr Thubans and the three Zephyr Sidons. Okay. So your Deneb search them. So no Altairs. No Altairs. You just run Deneb and these th and these two. Because Deneb searches these and these are all your pops. Okay. Zephyr Thuban pops any face up. Mm -hmm. Zephyr Sidon pops any face down. Okay. Between this, your only worries at that point are Light Imprisonings and Skill Drains, which I have counters for later on in the deck. Okay. And because you can use these to Pendulum Deneb, mm -hmm. it adds on to the swarm factor because you set these as your scales, you pendulum to Neb, you search, you can normal summon, you can go into Traver, you can go into other fours, just generalize swarm and XYZ plays with these. And then next comes the Yang Zing engine. Mm -hmm. You run three Zephraxi and three Zephyr Niu. So Zephraxi is the one that Synchro summons, right? He is the one that when he is Pendulum summoned or Special summoned from the deck, mm -hmm. you uh, get to turn any of your Zephras or any of your Yang Zing monsters into a tuner. Oh, wow. He is MVP for days. Mm -hmm. He is probably the reason I beat Clifford's. In all, <laughs> in all honesty, this guy saves lives. Like, oh my god, you guys gotta hear this play. This man, this man, he, he synced into, what was it? What was it? I synced into Ancient Pixie Dragon while I had Oracle of Zephyr on the field. Oracle of Zephyr lets me top deck a monster, to which I top decked Santa Claus. Then because I had Ancient Pixie on the field, since I resolved my field spell, I got to draw Santa. I tributed his towers for Santa, and then I cast El Santa back into my deck so I could swing directly. And beat my ass. And I whooped his ass with it. <laughs> oh my god, he was so impressed. Alright, so he's the one that makes your tuners. Next is him. What he does is he will search out any Zephra spell or trap. So he gets you your field spell, he gets you your divine strikes, which divine strikes save lives. Yeah. So these two are just generalized, you know, toolbox and search. Next you have your Shadal engine, which you don't run many of. You only run one of each. Okay. These guys, him for sure, you never have to worry about his effect. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't even know it because I never use it. <laughs> he is a Shadal target for fusions, and he's a one scale for my pendulums. Okay. Him. He has a 1950 defense, which is nothing to laugh at, you know. Yeah, nice you, you, you put him face down, they try to swing into it with a 15 attack monster, you know, you're good. When he is pendulum summoned or sent to the graveyard, mm -hmm. you can special summon one of your scales. Oh, okay. So, so it allows you to push for more damage. Yeah, so it's more damage, more rank fours. You know, just more plays you can go into because you set your scales, you pendulum him, you get one of your scales back. Okay. And again, another shit all for my fusions. Now, the three best shit all monsters, in my opinion, we'll go with Hedgehog first. Hedgehog just gets you your shit all fusions. You know, that's really all you need to worry about with him is you get your fusions. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he's. I hate you. Why? You only run one dragon? That's all I need to run. Then how. So, I, so I beat your Clippers. So you, you run one dragon. I won one I dragon. I drop kill on you. I say fact, and you drop that one dragon. Yeah. Why do I keep on cutting people in the miracles? <laughs> I hate this shit. I run one oh dragon. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the one dragon, he pops any back row if you send him into the grave, and he will compulse any card. Just send it right back to their hand if he slip face up. Again, he's another should all engine for my, another should all target for my fusions. And then Falco. He's another tuner and probably one of my most important tuners for reasons I'll explain when I get into the extra deck. When he flips face up, he summons any Shadal from your grave face down, which if you fusion summon your fusions, you can get your fusions back. Yep. He flips face up, you have a construct in your grave, you get that construct face down because then they try to be stupid and swing into it with a special summon monster, it flips face up and their monster's instantly destroyed. Yep. Or, you know, you get your only dragon back, put it face down, come pulse another monster. So that's my Shadal engine. Now, like I said, my only real problems are skill drain and light imprisoning. Archfiend eccentric. Yes. Solves these, that right there. These are there. not proxies. These are real people. Re I pull, since they have come out, I have pulled a total of seven. Wow. 
So, I've gotten rid of all of them. These are my own personal for my playset. These are probably the best card in this deck, in all honesty. Because you play Skill Drain, you play Light Imprisoning, there goes 90% of my deck. Yeah. Before this came out, I had no counters, because when I was making the deck, I saw those Satellers, and I'm like, why do I need to run MSCs? These pop everything for me. Then I get Skill Drain, I'm like, well, fuck. <laughs> so these pop Skill Drain, they pop Light Imp, they get over any, you know, monster. That's essentially the Arch Phoenix centric. So I, when it's in the Pendulum, it pops a Speller Trap? Yeah, when you play it in the Pendulum, it pops a Speller Trap. If you summon it, it'll pop itself on a monster. Wow, that is such a powerful card. No wonder Konami made it a secret. Yeah, no. I knew it was going to be good. It's a free destruction of anything, except for towers. <laughs> I, hate, I hate towers, man. <laughs> Alright, that's it for the monster count. Okay. Now you run three of the field spells. Of course. Because the field spells are great. They're the tankies of this deck. Yep. You play it, you get to search any Zephra. Yep. That's just, you know, just search a Zephra, good to go. They also gain effects based on what kind of summon you do. If you Ritual Summon, you get to shuffle a monster back into the deck. If you Fusion Summon, you get to Special Summon a monster from your hand. If you Synchro, you get to Top Deck a monster. And then if you XYZ, you get to draw a card and then discard a card. Which that works really well with the Shadal engine. Yep. You draw a card, drop a Shadal, get the Shadal effect, keep going. Yep. So you run three of the field spells. Next up, you run two Rotos. I was going to run three, but I, since I only run the two Denebs, my only other warriors are the Satellar Zephyr Thubans. And they can be searched with the field And they can be searched with the field spell, so I only needed these for the, um, for the Denebs. After that, you know, there's really not much left to do with them. Alright, so... You have an El Shadal Fusion and a Shadal Fusion. Those, you know, your basic fusion cards, if they have a card special summon from the extra deck, you can use uh, targets from your deck. Which, if you do use uh, the Shadal Pendulums, they do go to the grave. Pendulums will only go to the extra deck from the field. If you ditch them from your deck, if you ditch them from your hand, they go to the grave. So that is also why you run the Zephyr Core. Shadal Zephyr Core is when it's sent to the grave, you can summon one of your scales. So if you need one of your scales out, you send him for your fusion, summon your scale, summon your pet or your fusion, and there's more damage. And you know, quick play, you can either just use it as a shadow fusion, or if you shadow fuse, you can swing then quick play for more damage. So basic fusions. I don't like that. I have a scare Pot of riches. I run it at one, but I'm considering putting it up to two. It is my only recycle for Archfiend Eccentric. Because all of the Zephyr monsters in their pendulum effects say that you can only pendulum summon Zephyr monsters, once Eccentric is in your extra deck, you cannot get it back. So I run Pot of Riches. It's a good draw card for pendulums. It gets them back out of the graveyard and if I need them. It recycles my Archfiends and it's draw theory. Would you ever think about running three Eccentric? No, three eccentric is too cloggy. Because of the fact that you can't yeah. pendulum summon it, it gets too cloggy. You know, if you've got if you've got all three in your extra deck and you can't pendulum them, they're just kind of you know stuck there. Okay. Next up is one dark hole, one Rageki. Fuck that card. Basic, uh, you know, field clear. This is what won me my match against Clifford. In, in all honesty, this is just as much MVP as uh, Zephraxi. So, you know, basically uh, field clear. Next is probably my favorite trap in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Divine Strike. Zephyr Divine Strike. Remember when Gladiator Beasts were threatening because of War Chariot? This is War Chariot on steroids. Anytime anything is activated, you banish the Zephyr from your extra deck to negate and destroy. Solemn judgment. My, it's my solemn judgment. You're Nova. My, yeah, this thing... You have to let me, like, give you the... I have legitimately Zephyr Divine Strike three Dantes in one turn. It is hard. This isn't a real one, is it? I have gotten rid of all three Dantes, turn two of the duel with Zephyr Divine Strike. Wow. This card saves lives. <laughs> Zombie Warrior is a real card, but that's not the picture for it. Echo Oscillation. Mm -hmm. It is more draw power for the deck. Yeah. Uh, once per turn, and since it is a trap, you can do it during either player's turn, even though it doesn't state during either player's turn. Mm -hmm. uh, you pop one of your Pendulum Scales and you draw a card. You can make a lot of plays, like if you have a 7 scale in your hand, and so you know you're not going to need your 7 scale, you pop your 7 scale to draw one. 
you know, that draw, drawing is always helpful. You never know what you'll get. It can, you can top deck right decking and go for game. Yep. So that's just basic draw. Maybe they are, like, I don't know. Next is Shadal Core. Shadal Core is a very recent tech. I just replaced Nef Shadal Fusion with this. Mm -hmm. The reason I prefer this over Nef Shadal is I run a Nautilus or whatever it's called in the extra deck. Mm -hmm. And it's my Necros counter, but you need a water target for it. Yeah. The only water target for Zephyrus would be Zephyr Saber, so but he's part of the Necros engine. Help her, and, part, and the Necros engine really run. isn't worth running. Cool. Yeah. It's too slow, not strong yeah, enough. I, I don't care. So you use Shadal Core. It adds another Shadal monster into your engine. And since you can declare an attribute, it allows you to go into the other Shadals that you normally couldn't. A Nautilus, Grista, that kind of stuff. So another monster and another attribute. This is a very plain but very splashable card. And then the rest is just staple. Bottomless, just to, you know, get rid of something. Or if they pendulum summon, you get rid of their whole field. Mm -hmm. Mirror Force to get rid of those Shiny. attack position monsters. Has that ever and caught anybody off guard? Like, mirror Force, just the one random Mirror Force? Yeah. Because I teched it in without anybody knowing. Wow. Because people have been helping me build this deck for a while now. And so, I was always under the impression like Mirror Force and stuff like that isn't worth running unless you run at least two. And then without telling anybody, I tech in this one Mirror Force, and so nobody knows I run it, and then I was fighting someone, they swarmed the field and attacked, and I Mirror Forced, and they were just floored by it, because I got rid of all of their plays. Wow. So, just basic staples for the last three cards of the deck. Okay. And then next is the extra. Yeah. It should be full of everything. The, the extra, once I get to the MVP of my extra deck, you will understand why I beat Clifford's. First up is Winda. Yep. Construct, yep. a Nautilus, yep. and Shekinaga. Okay. Winda, basic staple for any deck that can really go into it. You can't be destroyed by card effects, and both players can only special summon once per turn. You know, that stops a lot of plays right there, because a lot of decks are so reliant on special, get to do something, special, get to do something. That cuts that down. Would you ever think about running two Construct to push the more damage with that? Um, seeing as it is a Zephyr deck and not a Shadal deck, I don't think I run enough targets to be able to reliably do two, because there are games when I've gone through all four. You've actually gone to... I've gone through all four of these in one game before. Wow. And so, si since I only run a total of five Shadals, I don't think I could reliably put in a second. Um, Construct, really good to get over anything that was special summoned. It'll just instantly destroy it. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, it's other effect that I don't really use too much. The send a shit off and redact your grave. It can be clutch in certain situations, but as far as Zephyrs go, you don't really need it that much. A Nautilus, like I said, is my Necros counter. They can't summon monsters using spells or traps, so they can't ritual summon. I get this on the field, Necros can't play. Yeah. And then Sheki Naga, I never actually use her for her effect. Mostly, she's just a 3,000 defense monster. I have nothing else I can do, and I know that they're going to run me over. I go Shekinaga. It's a good wall. Even if they can run it over, they at least ran over a monster instead of swung directly. So, you know, Shekinaga for me is just a wall. Since I don't run enough Shadals, I can't effectively use it to fact. Uh, what Earth? Uh, the Yang Zing's Earth. The uh, Zephraxi and the Zephyr Nidu Earth. Next is Metaphysaurus. Metaphysaurus is the reason I said that Falco is probably the most important tuner. Falco is the only way I can go into Metaphysaurus. Because Metaphysaurus puts in work because something I actually just learned recently, if you use a pendulum as the non-tuner, you get both the effect monster effect and the pendulum monster effect. Because a pendulum monster is treated as both. So when you use Falco and one of your level 4 pendulums, which I run mostly level 4 pendulums, it gets the effect of negating a face-up card on the field, which again counters that skill drain, again counters that light in. So, you know, there's that. And then the pendulum effect is when you summon it with a pendulum monster as your non-tuner, you get to take control of one of your opponent's monsters. They get to choose, but if they only have one monster, it's not a hard choice. So you go into it when they have something you know you can't run over, they have to give it to you. The only downside is it can't attack for that turn, but it is a permanent snatch steal. So, you know, there's nothing they can do other than get rid of it now. Now, 
Yeah. He is the MVP. Fuck him. This guy. If you are running Zephyrus, you run Ancient Pixie Dragon no matter what. You get into him using Zephraxi in one of your fours because he's a seven. And as long as you have Oracle of Zephyr on the field, he will win you the game. What Oracle of Zephyr does is when you Synchro Summon, you get to top deck a monster. Well, Ancient Pixie Dragon's effect is that when you resolve a field spell that's activated on your turn, you get to draw a card. So you top deck any monster you want out of your entire deck, no matter what it is. You top deck a monster, and then because your field spell resolved, Pixie Dragon lets you draw it. Which, that is the play that I used to get over towers in Clifford's. I synchro summoned, top deck Santa Claus, tributed his towers with my Santa Claus, overlaid into Castell, put Santa Claus back into my deck, and swag. Directly. Just completely free of charge. His uh, secondary effect is if you control a field spell, once per turn you can destroy one face-up attack position monster your opponent controls, which again makes him good for getting over stuff you otherwise couldn't get over. MVP. Clearwing Synchro, really just another Clifford counter. Anytime a level 5 or higher monster would activate its effect, you negate it. So you know they can't Carrier, they can't Helix. Generally, you know, it's not that strong at only 25. It doesn't really have the best effect, but being able to negate those Cliffords is worth running it. Yazi. Yazi is another MVP of the deck that I didn't actually get the chance to use today. Um, he can pop, he can't be destroyed by card effects, and he can pop any Yang Zing monster and another card of your opponent. He can't be controls. destroyed by card effects. No. That he can't be targeted. Or can't be targeted, that's right. He can't be targeted by card effects. Um, can't be targeted by card effects. Uh, can destroy any Yang Zing and any other monster or any other card your opponent controls. And if he is destroyed by a card effect, you get to special summon a Wyrm from your deck. The reason that's good is because Zephraxi, the one that makes tuners, his effect also makes pendulums when he's special from the deck. Or it also makes tuners when he's special from the deck. So you can pendulum him to make a tuner, or you can use his effect to special him from the deck to make a tuner. So he allows more plays. Okay. And you know, being able to just freely pop something is never bad. Yep. Even if you pop himself, then you get the effect of destroying one, summoning the Zephraxi, making a tuner going again. Yep. The better scrap dragon. <laughs> Eight Mr. Prominence is probably the one of the best synchros for pendulums. You get to pop a pendulum card you control, either a monster or one of your scales and shuffle any card your opponent controls back into the deck. The reason that's good is because it doesn't state one of your pendulum cards. If you're in a pendulum mirror match, like if it's, you know, Zephyrs versus Cliffords, I can pop their scout and then shuffle their monolith. I just got rid of two of their cards and got a 2850 beater on the field. So he's pretty pro. Next, you've got General Staple Castell. You know, he's what allowed me to do the Santa Claus play that I did. Shuffled Santa back into the deck, swang for 2k. Really, not much to it. This guy. This guy won me the game. Uh, my opponent had Chicken Race on the field, and we were tied in life points. 2,700, 2,700. He had four or five Cliffords on the field, and nothing, I couldn't have done anything. I top deck Raigeki, and I was just like, oh my god, I know what to do. I overlaid into him, targeted one of his monsters, because I knew that if I didn't deal 27 right off the bat, that chicken race wouldn't allow me to deal any more damage, because the player with the least amount takes no damage. So I had to game him right there. So I summoned Dark Rebellion, I stole the attack of one of his monsters, Raigeki to steal and swing for game. This guy can get over a lot of things, and if you get him on the field before Towers comes out, he's also a pretty good Towers counter. <laughs> Excite on Knight and Cowboy. Those are just two basics that every deck needs to run. Any deck that can go into fours, at least. If you play a deck that goes into fours and you don't run these, you're bad. Castell 2. Castell 2, yeah. 101. 
a lot of people have been telling me that I can afford to get rid of him for other stuff. I like it as a tech choice because there are a lot of things he can help me get over. If I'm fighting Shadals, he gets rid of Construct. If I'm fighting Shadals, he gets rid of Winda. You know, if I, if I get my one special summon and get him, if I get my one special summon to get him out, I can get rid of Winda. But when they're sent to the graveyard, they get their friends. That's fine. Wouldn't it be better to run a second cast out in that case? Yeah. Maybe, but... It's not just the Shadals, that was just an example. You know, I, I could 101 the Wind, I could 101 the Construct. At the same time, you know, I'm up against Tellers. I 101 their uh, Traver. Then when Traver goes to the grave, he didn't leave with materials. He doesn't have his effect anymore, you know. It lets me get over a lot of things that I otherwise couldn't. So I, I just like the idea of being able to say, I'm going to steal it, and then I have a good defense for at least two attacks. It's not just the steel aspect, it's the fact that he also defends himself because when he would be destroyed, he can detach. Okay. So it's that's the difference between him and Castell is yes, Castell, Castell would be better if I just wanted to get rid of it. He's better to get rid of it and have a defense. And the final card is Traver. Traver puts in so much work. Because I run the Denebs and because I run the uh, Teller Knight Zephras, I can go into him incredibly easily. He lets me get back my scales, get back my entire field so that I don't have to worry about them doing any cheeky shit. Yeah, that's what he did to me. He tripped. I was going to wavering eyes him. He was going to wavering eyes me. I travered. I got everything back, gave him everything back. And then picked my damn wavering eyes out of my fucking hand. And, and then I used his effect and ditched his wavering eyes out of his hand. And another reason he's good is because these state that I have to pop another Zephyr or a Teller in order to use their effects. If I use his effect twice and leave him with one material, and then I get these on the field and I pop him... I get the pops from these two, and then I can summon Deneb from my grave and search out another. Yep. So as long as I leave him with one material, I can use these to get him back and opens up some more plays. And, you know, that's my deck profile. All right, people. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. Like I said, this man beat my ass. I don't know, it's a terrible day. <laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you guys think. So, Best effort deck I have ever seen. Actually teaching him, and, I, and I am damn proud of that. Yeah, yeah. He put in a lot of thought, a lot of work, a lot of play testing, and it paid off. Yeah. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and we'll see you guys next time.